I don't even know what to say. Welcome back to the NASCAR Nick channel. Hope everyone enjoyed the race. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Where do you even start? Um, God. Okay, I'll say this. There's a lot to unpack here, and I'll just preface this. I don't want to make this a review because a bunch of other YouTubers have already done their reviews, and there's nothing I really feel like I can really add. I mean, we all know what happened. You guys watched the race, so I don't really want to rehash all of that stuff, but I want to just mainly focus on, well, I guess I want to focus on, like, what I thought about the race just overall as it as it was, and then obviously we got to talk about the finish because, oh, man, painful, <laughs> painful. Um, so... I did watch the full race, and I was, I'll be honest, I was kind of excited, be, just because it was, there were so many unknowns, we, no one knew what to expect, obviously, first time being there with that track, and were people, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> were people going to crash all the time, you know, how were tires going to be, how was the fuel mileage going to be, and then who was going to be running up front, I thought I had it nailed down like Martin Truex Jr., Clint Boyer, uh, I forgot who else I said, um, Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, a couple others. I thought they were going to do well and some of them did and some of them didn't. Uh, so that kind of, you know, I was half right with that. But, but overall, yeah, I thought the race was pretty good. It was fairly competitive. There wasn't a lot of upfront battles. I mean, you know, he had Kurt Busch and Kyle Larson at the beginning, which was good. And then Kyle Larson kind of dominated, like, the middle portion of the race. And then the third stage was kind of, you know, whatever. Martin Truex Jr. was up there. Um, Jimmy Johnson was around the top five all day. Clint Boyer was up there, and then he went back, and then he got back up there. So Chase Elliott was pretty good throughout the day, if I remember correctly. Um, so... You know, it was pretty. It was pretty competitive. It was there weren't a ton of like lead changes, but with you know besides the lead, it was pretty competitive, and you just never knew if someone was going to make a mistake. Look at those blue berry, um, blue turtle things that Clint Boyer called them, were pretty aggressive, and they would definitely, you know, mess up your car if you ran over them. And so, you know, every every lap, it's like, oh man, is someone going to run over that? Are they going to like spin out and hit the wall? I mean, I don't know. You just never really knew what was going to happen no matter kind of what was going on on the track. Plus then you have all of the, you know, the great passes, the, you know, pushing um, on each other, on each other's doors and stuff like that. I mean, it was just a really good race. And I definitely enjoyed watching it and that was, it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, would it have been better without the stages? <laughs> I mean, probably, but, but I'm always gonna say that. So that's not really saying much, but, Oh God, the the finish. The finish of this race. You know, I've seen a lot of comments and I've been on social media, obviously, and I don't want to make this video too long, but the finish of this race will be remembered pretty much forever as the you know the first Roval race and everything. And let's talk about the last restart. So not the, you know not the one where everyone crashed, but right right after that, the last. The last restart. And, you know, we have Jimmy Johnson sitting in second, Chase Elliott's third, and Martin Truex Jr. leading. And I'm thinking, okay, Chase Elliott's, you know, Jimmy's probably screwed because he's starting on the outside. So I was like, well, that's great. So it's probably over. Chase Elliott actually let him in. So I was super, I was kind of surprised by that, but very happy that he did because had he not, then it could have been Chase Elliott up there, which would have been cool. I mean, would have been fine with me either way. But of course, I'd rather Johnson. And so he lets him in, and then, like the analysts that were kind of, you know, doing the commentating, I, I also thought, like, okay, well, Truex is probably just going to drive away from him the last three laps, and it's just going to be Truex winning, but hopefully Johnson can advance, right? That's kind of what I was hoping, or a lot of other Jimmy Johnson fans were hoping that as well. And so these last couple laps, I mean, you know, he's kind of staying with them, and then he's, like, not really going away. Truex really isn't able to get away from him. And so, you know, that final lap was just, it ended up being crazy, but 
just like Dale Jr. said, Johnson just got a really great run through the chicane on the backstretch. And Truex went through there fine as well, but Johnson did it even better. And he, uh, he got a really good run going into three and four of regular Charlotte. Coming on the front stretch, and here I'm thinking, dude, you're locked in. You know, I don't know. I always think big picture, I guess. And to me, you know, I've been following Jimmy since, I guess you could say 2007, but mainly 2008. And, you know, he always thinks big picture. Him and his team are always about big picture, like what's going to get us the closest possible to winning a championship. And they've been pretty good at it. And so I was thinking, okay, you know, he might try to, he's going to try to outbreak him. I knew that for sure. I mean, in, in that situation, what driver is not going to try to outbreak the other driver or whatever? So I knew that was probably going to happen, but he's, so I thought he's probably going to try to outbreak him, uh, you know, Maybe he'll try to come up on his side and stuff and then door slam to the finish line or he'll do a crossover move or something like maybe like early break and then get on the throttle early. I don't know. I thought maybe that was going to happen, but he uh, wheel hops, spins the car. And once he started spinning, I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> I mean, the race, his race is over at that point as far as winning or so I thought. And then he, you know, as he's spinning out, backs into Truex Jr. Truex goes spinning into the wall. So they're both kind of sitting there wrecked. And I'm like, well, if Johnson goes right now, he could probably still win the race or get like second or third, but he could probably still win the race. And I was, you know, I was super excited, obviously, as I'm sure many people were. And um, yeah, then he, then he stops and does the stop thing. And I was like, oh, like that sucks. I mean, at that point it was like, it was already over. He didn't win. Um, Ryan Blaney wins, so let's talk about that for a second. It's really bittersweet for me because I love Ryan Blaney. He signed one of my hats and I actually just bought his die cast, which is a really cool car. It's the one that he raced at Chicagoland, which is the race I went to. So that was kind of cool to pick that up. But anyway, I like Ryan Blaney. He's a cool guy. He definitely deserves the win. He should have won a couple races already this year. And so what better time to win than right now in the, in the chase? Um, and I'm still going to call it that because that's what it is. And <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that, and he's very deserving. But, God, the way it happened, like, if, if he was battling Jimmy Johnson and they finished 1-2, fine. You know, if Jimmy finished 5th, fine. Like, I just, but he wrecked, and he's out of the chase. And, again, not that he was going to, I didn't think he was going to win the championship this year, of course. Like, even if he made it to the round of 12, I don't think he would have made it to the round of 8 unless some miracle happened. But it's just the fact that, like, He's out of the hunt now. It takes a lot of the, like, energy out of it for me. It's like, all right, now I can just watch the last, what is it, like, seven weeks or whatever. I don't care who wins, really. I mean, um, I don't have a, you know, a driver in the game anymore. So I'm just kind of watching to watch at this point. But I just wish he stayed in because I feel like teams that are in the playoffs are, or uh, I just said it, didn't I? I feel like teams that are, you know, in the chase always step up their game and then when they get knocked out or whatever they just kind of falter and don't really do much the rest of the year and so now that he's out and doesn't have that pressure on him to wow guys we're going for a championship I don't know I feel like he's just gonna run the last seven races and call it a, a year I guess so hopefully I mean we're going to Dover next week hopefully he can do something there but he ran pretty mediocre in the spring they have better cars now, though, so I'm crossing my fingers. I'm actually, I'm crossing everything I've got. <laughs> I want to see Johnson win so bad. I can't even hide it, but you guys know, you know I'm a huge fan of his. Um, but, yeah, the, and it was, it, the finish was also weird, too, because since following Johnson for, I guess, 10 years now or 10 or 11 seasons or whatever it's been, you know, like I mentioned, he always thinks big picture, and this was just not a big picture move. Like, he himself said he was – purely only thinking about the win. And it just was very like un Jimmy Johnson like to do that. Like to make that mistake. And I I on my Instagram account, which I'll give you guys a uh, a link to or whatever in the video, but I posted on there after the race and I said, you know, this was probably one the biggest bonehead move of the season besides Austin Dillon crashing Trevor or not Trevor Bain. Austin Dillon crashing Eric Almirola in the Daytona 500. Like, that was 
bonehead move. I mean, that's bonehead move of like the last probably 10 years. But this that Jimmy did, I think personally, and I'm again a huge Jimmy Johnson fan, but I think it was just a stupid boneheaded move. He was locked in. And like I'm all for going for the win, and I wanted him to win so bad, but just the fact that he wrecked himself out of the of the chase just just sucks. And I know hindsight's 2020, and I can be a you know a uh, what do they call it like a Monday night quarterback or or whatever you know, and always look at what could have happened and everything. I get it, but I just thought it was it was unnecessary. I, I mean, he's going for the win. I can't blame him because he hasn't won in a long time. Um, but I've just never seen Jimmy Johnson like that. I, he just he was racing nervous, like he was racing desperate, and you could kind of see it like in the last few laps. Like he was just like jittery behind the wheel. Like he wasn't smooth. Jimmy's always been smooth, you know. He's always been like everyone says vanilla with his personality, but that's kind of how he races too. And he's not, I'm not saying he's vanilla. I don't think he's vanilla at all. He is definitely expressive of his emotions for sure. Um, but I think his driving style has always been extremely smooth and just calculated, just super calculated. And has, oh, he's always done everything he can to put himself in the best position to win or get max points or blah, 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 like you name it. Like that's what he does. He's efficient and he's the ultimate opportunist. And that's, that's his game plan all the time. And I was just so surprised to one, see him racing so jittery and, and, and kind of anxiously and, um, and not be that smooth, calm, confident, seven-time champion that we all know him to be. And, you know, as well as just to not think about the points situation. I mean, I know he said, you know, he said he knew where he was in the points and he just wanted the win. And he put that win over his championship, which, again, he himself did say. He's like, yeah, I... I did. I was thinking more about this victory than the title. Um, so anyway, I'm just disappointed in the results, obviously. I would have loved to see him win, of course. I would have also loved to see him finish second and advance the round of 12. Again, even though I don't think he could have won the championship, the year, championship this year, it would have just been cool to be able to keep cheering for him, I guess, instead of just now being kind of sitting on the sidelines and just watching whoever else goes and wins the, the championship this year. And that's really all I have to say about it. I can definitely see both sides of, oh, he should have finished second or should have gone for the win. It, it's tough. I, you know, I see both sides of that, and it's kind of hard to be in one camp because, I, like I said, I really wanted him to win, but I also wanted him to still be in the, in the chase, and ugh. Just kind of frustrating, and again, bittersweet because I love Ryan Blaney, and he wins the race, and so I am happy for him. But at least for me, this race is definitely overshadowed by the by the the last lap crash there. Overall, I thought it was a really good race, and I definitely enjoyed it, and definitely one of the more entertaining races I've seen this year for sure. I mean, you know, Daytona 500 just because there's so it was just ridiculous with the crashing, and then this race, but for a better reason because of like strategy tires we almost had a fuel mileage race which would have been great and yeah it was a great race historic finish regardless because first first time winner at this track right so history was made and we're going on to dover so that's really all i have to say i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you liked the video, please hit that like button. And if you loved it, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.